Hello Charlie, Anthony here. Let me first start off by saying that there probably exists a more elegant solution to this problem, but this is the best that I could come up with given uh, the brief period of time. So to catch anyone up that may be watching this video, what Charlie was trying to do is uh, use my roll-up summary utility to summarize the values of a child object up to five parent objects. Now the challenge came in when each parent object had two fields that needed to be updated based on a year, uh, based on actually every year after 2009. So that essentially gave us eight fields for every parent object, five parent objects, that's 40 fields that need to be updated, possibly need to be updated every time a single child record is inserted. Now, as many of you have faced this problem before, Charlie ran into governor limits um, every time that he would try to insert a record, a child record, because the utility was called uh, every time, uh, regardless of uh, what year that record belonged to, he ran into system limit uh, exceptions, too many SQL queries 101, something that I'm sure many of you are familiar with. So in order to circumvent that, in order to bypass that, what I did is I rearranged, the, I restructured the trigger so that it would only process records based on different lists. And these lists would be populated uh, based on the year for that record. So we have four different lists, one for each year. Whenever a child record comes in, it populates that list. If that list contains records, then it goes out and calls the rollup summary utility for each object that it's updating and each field within that object. So essentially what we're doing is for every year, we are updating two fields in five objects, essentially causing 10 SQL queries, which should leave us well within the 100 SQL query limit. To demonstrate if this works, we can create a child record and see what happens. Now I've tested this, of course, so I feel confident that this will work. So let's see here. And we're just working with some test data here, so you'll see some, some repetition. Now I'm inserting a child record for the year 2009 meaning that the 2009 fields, or both 2009 fields for each object should be updated. And we see here we have five parent objects. So these fields should all be updated with the same value after the record, the child record is saved. So I'm going to save it and make sure I clear out my debug logs okay save now we see the first parent object same values of a hundred dollars second parent object same value third parent object same value fourth parent object same value and fifth parent object, same value. So we can see that the trigger worked as intended. Now let's look at the debug log and let's see how it performed. So if I search for the number of queries that were called, we see here that by inserting that one record, as we suspected by the restructuring of the trigger, only 10 SQL queries were performed still very lean, still well within your governor limits. Now, inserting one record is not a conclusive test, of course. So, and before I, I move forward, let me delete too, since the trigger works for both inserts and deletes. So I'm gonna delete this. Child record, so now the parent record should all go back to zero, which you can see they do, zero. Zero. 
0 and 0. So now to, to test this a little bit more aggressively, I'm going to insert 4,000 records, one for every year, and we'll see how this trigger performs uh, with the roll-up summary utility and if we run into any governor limits. So here I have my handy dandy data loader. Four thousand records. And this, by the way, is using the bulk API. Again, the utility and the trigger have been built to uh, process records in bulk. So you don't have to worry about having to serialize your data as you're inserting it um, or, again, reaching governor limits because of the way that the trigger was structured. Yes, let's begin. And we can see here the records are processing, no errors yet. And there we go, 4,000 successful inserts, zero errors. Now I inserted 1,000 records for, 1,000 child records for every year, meaning, oh, and each one had, having, having the value of $100, meaning that each parent object should have uh, summary values of $100,000. Let's see if that's true. We see all of the years, all the fields for all the years were updated successfully. For that parent object, same with this one, same with this one, same with this one, and lastly, same with this one. So we know that the trigger works. Now let's see how it performed inserting 4,000 records uh, in bulk. And we see here we have two very large uh, log files. And we can see that every time a particular year was processed by looking at the number of SQL queries performed, only 10 SQL queries, even though we were still dealing with a much larger data set, only 10 SQL queries were performed, were necessary, in order to uh, calculate the values that would be inserted into these five parent objects. And if we keep going, you can see 10 queries, 10 queries, 10 queries for each. Now let's look at the other log. Ten, ten, ten. So, uh, Charlie, I hope that this uh, solves your uh, the the problem that you were facing. I'm going to post this uh, revised trigger over on my blog so you can see it. Um, if you need any additional help, please feel free to reach me out. And again, to anyone that may be watching this, with anything that I publish on my, on my website uh, at anthonyvictorio.com, feel free to tweak it, feel free to break it uh, if you run into any challenges. Uh, and I encourage you to uh, put any utility that I built to the test rigorously break it and then get in touch with me and I'll help you uh, come up with a solution. We can work on fixing it together. Thanks and you guys have a great day. Bye.